Top of the morning to you. This is Tacky Ty. Today we are looking at Death in Dynasties. Be sure to watch the first episode of The Rules for Rulers. Uh, it's a good one. And it kind of gives the, the premise of how to keep your keys of power and not have a coup on your hands. Uh, but yeah, again, the, as always, the link is down in the description below for the original content creators. Uh, be sure to go over and give them a like and subscribe and give them the love and support that they well deserve. And let's get started. Or passes from member to member, forming a dynasty. Not just with royalty or dictators, but also with representatives in a democracy. Families pass power or vie with other families for a turn at the top much more than chance would have. Dynasties seem so natural you may never have deeply considered them, but you must if you wish to grasp and hold power as long as possible. Well, yeah, and it just makes it so there's not that uncertainty and turmoil period as much because it typically keeps within the same dynasty the same keys to power, at least mostly, and it's a lot easier to keep those same keys to power to endorse your heir rather than someone from the outside because who knows, they might end up on the outside of that court and be left out in the dust. Even if you follow the rules for rulers we have discussed, swaying the keys to power, securing the treasure and controlling the court, no man rules forever. Dictators with resources abundant and power unchallenged still die, and representatives must contend with death both literal and political. But no matter what kind of ruler you are, your keys to power value their treasure. They keep you in your position not for love of you in particular, but for the reward. So they can stay in power themselves rewards you provide in general. But dead rulers can't distribute treasure. Thus, as your grave approaches, your key supporters get nervous. Your impending death forces your keys to plan for your replacement, not just to- And they might plan and execute your replacement before you're even ready, because you showed weakness, you showed illness, especially in medieval times, if you had an heir apparent, and even times if you didn't have an heir apparent, they would make you have an heir apparent. Hopefully you have an eldest son. Um, and if, if, it's the, if it's the right type of structure of government, um, then even a daughter, uh, but at least somebody, so they can kind of edge that forward to keep, it's better to deal with it now on your terms, if you're a key to power, when you're king, is going to croak transition that now so it's a smooth transition so you can ensure the air is on your side and that you keep your key your place of power and keep your key supporters happy to maintain their treasure but also because a dead ruler surprise without plans in place will lead to a scramble for power at yeah. best and a bloodbath at worst leaving many keys on the inside now on the outside after this is why if you happen to be sick keep it's secret. If your keys even think you might die on them, they must start planning for the next ruler to avoid this. Which yeah. is what makes even a rumor about the ruler's health concerning. Whispers about your health are a destabilizing poison in the minds of your key supporters, nearly impossible to remove. To the keys, your replacement is inevitable anyway, so why not start planning sooner, just in case. Thus, after a rumor, the keys might seem to stay on your side in their actions, but really they're plotting behind your back just to make sure that their place is secure and their family is secure and their keys are secure because otherwise i mean like i said it just becomes a bloodbath i mean look at look at war of the roses i mean that's basically the same thing that kicked off that whole battle and basically every other dynastic power struggle in history 
minds, but you're already dead in their minds. You've lost control and will lose your Confidence. throne sooner than you like. But while you can't defend against the Reaper or extract poison from the minds of your key supporters, there is a way to defend your power in this world from there. rumors of your departure to the next. Family. Family is the answer. Dictatorships and democracies have so much family rule because the key supporters want it. As your term limit or deathbed approach, your family is there, ready to keep turning the machinery of power, keep raising the treasure, keep the keys calm and plot for Yeah, and it's interesting if you look back at like all of the US presidents in history, for example, like almost all of them are some way related to one another. Like even like even like even back in like the Revolutionary War, there was like Clintons and things like that, where it's like even though they were on the British side, um, like all of these same dynasties kind of pop up throughout history as notable figures, um, and it's just super interesting that, like almost all of our presidents today, linked back to, old kings of England, and. And that's kind of the same story everywhere. Sure, warm-hearted rulers may want to give their family advantages, and being the ruler comes with many, but the key supporters also want the ruler's family in positions of power because the family that plots together rules together. Generational power transcending death and term limits. Thus, your keys get to worry less about transitions of power, and you get to worry less about their plans for your replacement. While key supporters won't ever simply trust you and your family, the keys can look at the motivating interests of you all, calculating that sticking with your family during a transition gives them better odds of staying on the inside because they know you and your relatives also calculate sticking with the keys during a transition gives you better odds of staying on the throne. It's a virtuous cycle formed by calculations that are like trust but better. The ruler gets to rule longer, the keys get to worry less, and everything is smooth because when the king is dead, long live the king. So put family in high-ranking military, business, or political positions. Never mind their qualifications, because being family is the qualification. They must work with your key supporters so they know where the money comes from and how it is distributed. Families' relationships with the keys keep everyone calm, not just during the transition, but more importantly for you and your political longevity preceding it. So even if you have no interest in a spouse and have no love for babies, nonetheless acquire them. Of course, the risk you run with family is they too will overthrow you. Many a cunning prince has stabbed his king in the back once yeah. confident. And that throughout history that's been a big thing is like once you it's obvious that your eldest son is becoming of age but like look at Rome for example like that's something to keep in mind he would secure keys of power and key supporters and then something would happen to you and your son would take over the keys won't mind but nothing is certain you can only play the odds and a ruler without family is more vulnerable to rivals and rumors remember your keys care about the security of their treasure in general not you in particular. And for them, a family of rulers is a safer investment. Thus, possible regicide is the price you pay for buying the longer and secure reign a family brings, which is why families are so popular among rulers and their key supporters. Family is a tool for maintaining power just like any other. Yeah, exactly. And be sure to Go over to his Patreon, uh, give it a like, check out his channel, give him the love and support that he well deserves. Uh, also, check out my Patreon if you'd like to suggest some new videos in the future. Uh, I, It's usually the best place to get a hold of me and kind of see what you guys want to see next. Uh, but yeah, I will see you on the next one. Bye, y'all.